Hi, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you tuning in, and I've got another story I'd like to share with you today. Uh, for those of you here in the United States, I hope you have a wonderful 4th of July. Um, I say that because we've had a lot of visitors coming and watching from France and Poland, and uh, just this last week we had someone from China come to uh, to check out our, our stories. So uh, wish you all uh, who come here, I hope you enjoy uh, the, the things that we're sharing. I'd like today to talk about my great-great-grandmother. This is um, Odell Monson Hoganson. I had to think for a second. I'm getting, getting a couple stories mixed up. Odell Monson Hoganson is my great-great-grandmother, and uh, I'd just like to share with you some of the things that uh, she experienced in her life. Um, the stories uh, that I actually have are from her granddaughter. Uh, this is... Uh, my Aunt Edris is what we called her, uh, Edris Hansen. Um, and if less I'm mistaken, I think Edris is one of my grandmother's sisters. And uh, she wrote this uh, short biography history of uh, Bodell, um, who was my great-great-grandmother, uh, a number of years ago. Uh, I found it online, and I really liked it. And hope I don't get in trouble, but I actually posted uh, the story under... Uh, Bodell's uh, entry in, in family search. So you can go in and read this again if, you, uh, if you're interested. Um, Bodell Monson Hoganson was born in 1844 in Sweden. Um, her father was a farmer um, and he owned a very small piece of land, but he was recognized, even though it was a very small farm, he was recognized for his ability as a, a very uh, productive farmer. Um, her mother was also uh, Christina, who was my great-grandmother's great name. Uh, Christina Pearson uh, says that she was described as a woman of high ideals and taught her children with proper attitude toward life and their fellow men. So Odell uh, was actually the oldest of uh, the uh, uh, Monson children. Um, she had three brothers and one sisters. And when uh, Bodell Monson was 11 years old, her mother passed away. And Bodell being the oldest, it fell on her to take care of the younger children. And at 12, uh, she began to work outside the home, uh, doing regular housework indoors, and uh, mostly uh, work that was done by the boys and men outdoors, she took part in that as well. And for 12 years, uh, that was her way of life working in, in homes of other people. At 24 years of age, she left Sweden and moved to Denmark. And there she worked on a number of estates, milking cows morning and night. And uh, besides that, she was also in charge of making the beer and making the bread for a number of estates and households. Uh, it says that one estate alone had 11 cows uh, that she had responsibility for. And during uh, planting and harvesting season, she worked right alongside all the men uh, through those seasons. And so I got to believe she was uh, a pretty, uh, pretty tough woman. And uh, I think that's a wonderful thing. She'd been in Denmark for about uh, six months, and she met a young man by the name of Niels Hoganson. Niels Hoganson was working in Sweden as a stonemason, and uh, that was what he uh, had studied for. However, uh, Niels also came from Sweden uh, to Denmark, and so you had two Swedes who met up in Denmark, and uh, they courted for uh, about a year and a half, it says, and they were married in a Lutheran church in the year 1870, and uh, they lived in Denmark, continued to live there uh, for another four years, and uh, two of their children were born, Peter and Christian uh, were their little boys. Now, it says that on a very stormy night, early in 1877, this was early being January, February, two Mormon elders, one by the name of Johan Jensen and the other just Elder Christensen, came to their home. Uh, they were two local elders, and shortly afterwards, uh, another elder by the name of Elder Soren Jensen came, and the Hogansons, it says at that point, became very interested. I don't know if there were language issues or whatever it was, but Elder Soren Jensen was uh, actually uh, the one that got them very interested in the gospel, and they joined the church, Niels and uh, 
Bodell joined the church in February of 1877, and they were baptized by Elder Niels Christensen from Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, shortly after that, their first daughter was born, and her name was Christina, and she is my great-grandmother. And uh, at that time, in the uh, spring of 1880, spring of 1880, they decided that they would immigrate to America. And so at that point, Niels started to make all the preparations to get the, down to uh, Copenhagen, where they would sail to the United States. And so he went ahead and made those trips in Copenhagen, while Bodell took the two little boys and my great-grandmother, Christine, and they went back to Sweden to say goodbye to their family there. They landed in Sweden, uh, Christine and her three small children, and then they walked almost 100 miles from the coast to their home in a city called Voxtrop. Uh, I've tried to find that on a map, and it looks like it is a good, uh, a good walk to, to get there. Uh, Bodell made that trip in five days, covering 100 miles with three small children. Um, they met up again in, in Copenhagen, and then they set sail for the United States. After coming through immigration uh, in New York, they then hopped on a train and went towards Utah. It says after they had pulled out of the station in Omaha, uh, all three children took sick with the measles. So you can imagine what it would be like traveling in a new land on a crowded, dirty train with three sick children uh, until you arrive. That, that's your welcome to America. I think that's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, the Hogansons reached Ogden, Utah in July 29th of 1880 and immediately made their way up to Logan. Now, to make this difficult journey even more difficult, Bodell was pregnant at the time, and so three months after arriving in the valley into Utah, she gave birth to their fourth daughter, or fourth child, and it was a daughter by the name of Amanda. And uh, now they moved around several times while in Cache Valley and finally settled uh, in the Newton area where uh, Niels was homesteading a dry farm. Uh, they started to build a very nice uh, sandstone home, uh, but in the meantime, they were living in a dugout or a cellar. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I'm sure it doesn't sound pleasant. Well, in 1885, um, cholera hit Cache Valley, and uh, they lost uh, Joseph, who was their youngest child. And uh, the family was left for uh, quite a while without home, without wood for the winter, and it says that kind friends and neighbors took them in and actually for a while helped to, to them to build a two-room log house uh, in the Newton area. Um, the foundation had already been put up by Nils, and the logs were purchased by the family, but they needed the manpower, and many of their friends and neighbors came to help them do that. Uh, over the succeeding years, the family lived on the farm in the summer and then would go into town during the winter. It says that while they were on the farm, Odell had to carry water every day, twice a day, um, uh, for, from a neighbor who was three blocks away. Uh, they only had a little frame shack on the farm, and when the wind blew or the storms came in, they would grab a quilt and run to their neighbors because it wasn't waterproof and uh, it was not pretty much open to the elements. One summer, it says they did not have enough bread in the house, and for two weeks, the family lived on cheese that was made from sour milk, but they were able to drink sweet milk for that time. It says the bishop came by and gave them a sack of flour, and that sack of flour lasted them the entire summer. They were very grateful for that. In her life, it says Bodell drove cows that were staked on the Newton Reservoir twice a day uh, for water. And it was a distance of one and a half miles each way. It says she would take uh, her eggs and butter basket and walk to Newton and back twice every week. This was a distance of two and a half miles each way. It says to earn a little money, she went out and would kill hogs and sheep for people to help make a living. Um, one fall, they'd moved back to town for the winter, and she bought a small loom and wove carpets. Uh, they called them rag carpets back then, and cloth to help uh, fray some of the expenses on that. She took great pride in the fact that she wove 40 yards of rag carpets 
that were installed in the Logan Temple. After her husband's death, death, Niels passed away. Bodell was very anxious to have the temple work done. And uh, so in the summer of 1888, um, she and Peter, who was the oldest son, uh, started for Logan to go to the temple and were riding on the running gears of the wagon. It says, with two planks running lengthwise to sit on. Um, I don't, I can't picture what, how this works in my mind, but understand this was probably not the safest way to travel. It says they did not go far when the horses became frightened by something and they ran away. Bodell, in trying to get off the wagon, missed her step, fell under the wagon, and one wheel rolled over her, her leg. Uh, this injury caused her to limp for the rest of her life. Bodell was a woman of great faith. Uh, she was a prayerful woman and always went to the Lord in times of distress or trouble. Uh, there's a story that I'll, I, I won't just uh, for the sake of time, but uh, go into to her entry under, under uh, family search. There's a story there where she had uh, a vision of one of uh, Peter and Christian uh, who were in a wagon uh, that the, the, the horses were spooked and ran away. And she was able, while she was praying, to see this event took place and knew that her boys were safe. Asked, asked them about it after the trip, and uh, uh, she, she was a, a woman of great faith. Uh, in 1904, a two-room house was built on the old home lot, and Bodell lived uh, a long time by herself caring for her chickens and for her flowers that she dearly loved. In the fall of 1917, she moved in with my great-grandmother, Christina Hoganson, and there she spent the rest of her life. It should be noted that during the war, and I'm guessing this is probably World War I, um, she knitted sweaters, socks, and scarves uh, for servicemen. And it said, that she, it said that she received a certificate from the President of the United States of America thanking her for the work that she did. It says that she was very proud of that certificate. Don't know where it is today, but boy, if somebody has a copy of that, that'd be great to... Uh, to scan and we could add that into family search. Bodell had one day of the year that she especially looked forward to with great joy and anticipation. And that day was her birthday when all the children, neighbors and friends would come and visit her and have a good sociable time. Uh, she never forgot anyone else on her birthday either it says. And Bodell always got more pleasure and satisfaction in giving than receiving. And that's a true Latter-day characteristic, Latter-day Saint characteristic, I think. She died in December of 1931 in Newton and is buried alongside of her husband, Niels, and uh, two of her children in the Newton Cemetery. So I think this is a wonderful story of a, a faithful, devoted wife, mother, and, uh, and Latter-day Saint. A um, story of courage and uh, determination, and I think uh, a great example for all of us. And as uh, my great-grandmother, one that I'm very proud of. So thanks for stopping by. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.